Hi everyone, my name is Dawn Say. I'm one of the leaders here at the Bridge Church and we're really pleased that you're joining us this week for our midweek broadcast. We had um, a, a real new start on Sunday. We are starting to look for the next two weeks on refreshing. And um, Chris was talking about pressing the refresh button on what we do in church in our ministries. And I'll go a little bit more into what that meant and how that played out a little bit on Sunday in a moment. Uh, Chris also brought a message. Again, I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but whether you're joining us from locally or from afar, we pray that you'll be blessed by the content of today's message. So I'm going to start and pray uh, before we go any further. Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to set, spend some time uh, reflecting on the message that came on Sunday. Father, I pray for every single person who listens to this broadcast that you will speak into their lives. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will refresh um, us as well, um, that we will feel a renewing of your Holy Spirit, which we need every day. And Father, I just pray that um, you will bless every family that is represented um, by people watching this broadcast. And I pray a blessing on this week in everything that we do. Amen. So, as I say, we're going to go into the notices now uh, before we go any further. There's a lot going on at the Bridge Church, as always, every week. So make a note of what's going on. As you can see, plenty going on. Just to pull out a, a couple of things, we've got Easter coming up, high, one of the highlights of our Christian calendar, I would say, um, obviously celebrating the death and resurrection of our Saviour. Also on Wednesday the 3rd of April, we have got um, Bible 101. That's um, a new sort of thing we're trying on a weekday. It was really well attended last time. So if you haven't uh, been along to that, I do encourage you to put that in your diary. It's at the bridge on a Wednesday evening, 7.45. And also on the 7th of April, um, we have Peter back with us on Sunday. Um, Peter, you know, as always, brings something really prophetic for our church. So I'd encourage you to make sure you're in church for the 7th of April as well. And of course, this week is week two of our Refresh um, mini-series. And we'll be hearing from some different people who serve in different areas of the church. Um, but now we're going to head into uh, the, the preach. Chris brought a very short message on Sunday following through our, our, our mission statement, which is Reach, Restore, Release. And he opened up a little bit about how that plays out um, in our lives, uh, how it should play out in our lives. And then we heard um, from five people who serve in church. We heard from Nigel, who oversees Harlow. We heard from Ali. Uh, who oversees youth, we heard from Eddie who oversees mission, we overheard from Simon who oversees li life links and we, you heard from me as well so you get to hear a little bit more from me um, in this session and you know th everyone who spoke spoke with real passion about where they serve and what they oversee and how Reach Restore Release is impacted in, the, uh, in their ministry at the Bridge Church. So I'm going to lead now over to Chris and uh, for the word of God. 
Fantastic. Woo. Am I on? Are we good? Are we good? How is everyone this morning? Yeah. Uh, and if you don't know me, my name is Chris Scott, the, the, the leader of the church here. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a, just a joy and a privilege to be able to share with you this morning. And uh, I don't know if you noticed on the notices we've had in the last two or three. Well, by the way, Chris, a shout out. A whole lot of our business this morning. Yeah. You know, even, I wouldn't want to work with that. You know, from the outer limits of Essex to be with us this morning here. Uh, and he's lovely. It's so, such a joy. We're going to hear from a couple of these guys uh, in a little while. It's going to be a little bit of a different format today. That's why I'm up a wee bit earlier. I'm going to just do a little brief uh, talk about our vision. If you've seen over the last uh, a few weeks that we've had on our notices, Creation Activate, I'm being told, Creation Activate, uh, you are free to go and have your time together this morning, so you can have a, a brilliant telep of Creation Activate's already out there, isn't it? Creche. Yeah. Um, but you will have seen over the last few weeks uh, that we, this week and next week, we are doing something which we're just calling Refresh. And uh, basically we are just going to go for over our vision as a church. We feel that we have been kind of trimming water for a long time, maybe even some of our mindsets going back to COVID times and, 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 and we've been lacking in, in some real kind of freedom and passion. And so we felt as a team, uh, we met a little earlier on in the year, we felt as a team it would be really good for us just to refresh our vision, to recharge our passion and to reset some of our culture here at the Bridge Church. I'm maybe a tiny bit too loud now, I'm not sure. And so I've got a big, a big mouth. Um, uh, so what we want to do today is I'm just going to refresh the vision for a few moments. And then we're going to get a, a gang of people up the front, different people that lead here at the church, in the Bridge Church. And we're going to have a little conversation and a little interview this morning. I just hear from different perspectives um, of leaders within the church. Um, and then next week we're going to look at recharging our passion uh, and getting a, a fresh zeal for God's house and then resetting our culture and we're going to be inviting a bunch of people up next week, different team leaders from within the church. We're going to be talking about their passion, why they're so involved, why they serve in the church. And we want to then give you the opportunity to kind of step up your game and really kind of get involved and be part of the Bridge Church in serving the house, serving the mission, serving the vision of the church. And so that's, that's how we're going over the next couple of weeks. And uh, I really hope that it will be challenging. We had a great time of prayer this morning. And uh, we, we sang a real good old time song this morning in our prayer meeting called Turn Your Eyes Upon. Anyone remember that? Okay, don't, don't put your hand up because you are, you are letting on how old you are if you know that song. Uh, and we sang it this morning. And do you know what? That's our goal and that's our vision for this next couple of weeks is that we turn our eyes upon Jesus and we turn our eyes towards him and his call upon our lives because over the last few years and probably the last decade there is so much noise going on around us in the world so many distractions that are going on we feel it's time for us to turn our attention back to Jesus to stand on the solid ground of his promises and to walk in the purposes that he has called us for and so I hope and pray that, uh, that you will just kind of get on board with us. We have a lot of people that already serve and are involved in so many ways in the church. But we just feel we want to go up a notch. Uh, we're going to be rebranding some things next week as well. The whole church is going to look a bit different, hopefully. So we just really want to move to a new level where we start to focus in and really fulfill the purposes of God. And so we've called these two weeks Refresh. Bang the next one up for me, please, Matt. So anyone know what that is? If you see that on your computer or on an app, that is the refresh button. Uh, and when you press the reset button on your phone or on your device, it does this. I've, I've got a quote here. It says the refresh button updates the software or the programs that you are using to ensure that they are operating as they should. It clears out all the old systems, all the old paradigms, all the old files that have built up over a period of time that can clog up, slow down, and ultimately hinder the effective operation of the device. 
Now, there's a whole load of words in there, but I think that is such a challenge to us today because I believe that God wants us to refresh. You know, some of us, we've got some old mindsets, some old paradigms, some old experiences that are holding us back. Maybe, you know, we're still a little bit under the cloud financially or in terms of just pressure from COVID and post-COVID and all the things that are going on in the world today, and it can really weigh us down. And so what we're saying today is we want to hit a refresh button. We want to turn our eyes to Jesus and we want to make his call upon our life the primary call and the primary thing that we respond to. So are we up for that this morning? I mean, how many of you get that update message that comes on your, your phone and it says, do you want to update your software now or later? How many of you press now and do it immediately? How many of you press later because you're too busy and you can't be bothered? Yeah, there you go. And that says an awful lot, doesn't it? But you know what happens if you don't do it the first time or the second time or the third time, your phone begins to get clogged up and it doesn't operate in the way that it did before. And eventually you get to a point where your phone just crashes and then you have to do a complete reinstall and you have to clear everything down. And so we believe that as a people of God and as the church, that God is calling us to constantly refresh our vision, uh, recalibrate our lives so that in everything we are focused on our primary purpose, which is to bring honor and glory to the King of Kings and to honor the name of God and to fulfill his purposes in our lives. How many of you know that sometimes when you delete files from your computer or your phone, you think that they have gone, but where are they? They're in the recycle bin. Now, the recycle bin is one of those things that hides away in the corner of your computer. And you think, oh, that's great. I've cleared off all the files. You know, my computer's clean. It's great. It's wonderful. Uh, 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 But you're still saying you've only got like three megabytes left on your hard drive. You're thinking, how? I've just cleared a whole load of stuff up because it's sitting in your recycle bin. And you know, some of us sometimes, we can think that we've, we've moved on. We can think that we've gone past stuff, that we've dealt with stuff in our lives. And it's sitting there in the recycle bin of our lives. And this whole reset is all about us looking inward, looking upward and saying, God, how can we clean out all of that old rubbish, all those old mindsets, all those limitations that we have lived under for so long? And how can we be free now to pursue your heart and your vision for our lives in a way that we've not done before? And so over the next couple of weeks, uh, we want to refresh our vision, our understanding of the purposes of God. We want to recharge our passion for God's house. That's more than Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons. It's not just about meeting in church, but God's house is where God's presence is, where God's people and where God's purposes are outworked. That's the house of God. And uh, next week, we're going to talk briefly about getting a passion for God's house. And then also next week, we're going to talk about resetting our culture. And our culture is the prevailing value systems. And we're going to get practical next week and talk about what it really means to be committed to the house of God and to set a, a, uh, a characteristic, to set a culture within the church that people can come into and can be connected with. We're going to hear, as I said, from a number of people over the next couple of weeks. So this week, I just want to talk a little bit uh, about refreshing our vision. Now, if you have been part of Bridge Church for maybe the last 10, 15 years, You will see under the Bridge Church, our tag is Reach, Restore and Release. And we have preached through this on a number of occasions before, but I want us to refresh this because I really believe that this is at the very, very heart of our identity as a church. Why are we here? And where do we get that from? Well, we get it from this. We get it from Jesus' words in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 where Jesus, just before he's about to go back to the Father, he's speaking with his disciples and he kind of gives them, this is is like some of his final words to his disciples. And we all know that final words, last words, are really significant and really important, aren't they? And so Jesus says, he says, okay, in the light of all that I've done, all that you've experienced in the last 33 years, um, I'm, I'm giving you this command. Therefore, go 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to fulfill everything that I have commanded you. Now, I believe that throughout the world, every single church, really, we only have one vision. Really, we only have one purpose, and it is this. This is why we exist on the planet, so that we can fulfill what's called the Great Commission, uh, Jesus' mandate to his followers. And, uh, you know, every local church has its own kind of interpretation or its own kind of emphasis within that. But actually, that is what we are called to be and that is what we are called to do. And I believe we can pull out, reach, restore, release from the from this scripture this morning. I'm just going to refresh you. I'm going to be very short because we want to get some guys up. And we want to get some conversation going this morning. But the first word there is go. Go. Jesus says go. Go into the world. Go into the world. Reach the world with the gospel. You know, this was Jesus' primary purpose. He says, I have come to seek and to save those who are lost, those who are broken. It was Jesus' primary ministry. And I believe even, it's even in our name as the bridge that our primary goal is to build bridges into every part of our community. Because there are many, many people out there who are lacking in hope. They are lacking in peace. And, and we, don't we, we believe as Christians, those of you that are Christians in the house this morning, we believe that Jesus is our peace, don't we? We believe that he is our joy, and we believe that Jesus is the one who gives us purpose and meaning in life. But if we don't build bridges and we don't demonstrate that, and we don't express that in every constituency of our lives, then we are letting down this great commission for us to go. It's a very small word, go, two letters, but it strikes fear into the hearts of so many Christians I've found over the years, because we all just want to kind of stay indoors, sit down, keep quiet, you know, don't put our heads above the parapet in case we get shot at. But, you know, Jesus says, you know, that's not what it's about. Let's go into the world. Let's reach the world around us. Now, that may not mean that you're going to be a Billy Graham and you're going to preach to millions around the world. It might mean that. And if there's somebody in the house this morning with that gifting on you, then I I pull it out in the name of Jesus. But it, it means that your world, your work world, your family world, your neighborhood, your friends, the, the circle of influence that you have in your life, God has, has called you to go and to reach those people with the good news of Jesus. And we need to make sure that we are reaching out with the right message. You know, the word gospel comes from the Greek word evangelion, and it simply means good news or good tidings. And it's so easy for us to get wrapped up in theological debates and trying to convince people that they're wrong and that we're right. And Jesus says, no, we go with the good news. The good news that Jesus, when he died and was resurrected after, uh, 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 and was resurrected, that in that moment, we were restored to God and we had access to his love and his grace and his joy in our lives. The gospel is good news. It's not about convincing people that our religion is right or better than theirs. The gospel is about telling God's story, God's story to those that are around it. And of course, the reality is we've got to live it before we give it. We've got to live it before we give it. We've got to live in the joy, live in the grace, live in the peace that God has given us. Your life itself might be the first Bible that anybody ever reads. And what are they reading? Are they seeing the goodness, the purity, the peace of God in your lives? We need to be the good news before we can share the good news. And those of you that have been in church for a little while in, the, in this church particularly, you'll know one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 2 verse 4 says that, that it's the, the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And I believe that God is calling us to reach not only the nations, but our communities both individually and corporately as a church by being the good news, by showing the goodness of God to people around us. 
Because when you show them the goodness of God, the Bible says that brings them to a place of encounter with God. So I'm just going to run, run through these today. That's reach, restore, making disciples of all nations. I believe that one of the core purposes of us coming to Christ and having our lives changed is that he can restore the image of God within each and every one of us. And the way that God does that is by transforming us into the image of Jesus Christ by the work of the Holy Spirit. We all are broken, aren't we? We're all broken. We all come pre-programmed with a whole load of rubbish in our minds and experiences that have hurt us and broken us. And so we need to be restored. We all come having been bombarded with the lies and the deceptions of the world that are around us. And we need to come and be restored so that we can become more like Jesus in our lives. And there's a process of deprogramming and reprogramming that takes place. And that is what it is to be part of church. We are all on a journey from the moment that you make that first decision and say yes to Jesus. We begin a journey, an adventure of becoming more and more like him. And, and, and we have been talking about this for the last few years, but we believe that the discipleship process is right at the very heart of restoring the image of God that was broken in us through our sin. And so we believe that, that the, the goal of the gospel is not heaven. You know that the goal of the gospel is not heaven. The goal of our salvation is not heaven. That's the prize. The goal of the gospel is that we would grow and become more like Jesus so that we can fulfill his purpose in our lives. If you want to clap, you can clap that because that's a good point. And, uh, but you know, come on, guys, let's, let's engage with this. The goal is to become more like Christ. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, we read these words. We have been predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. When we were predestined, what does that mean? That means before anything else was ever created, before anything else was ever started, God saw you and he saw me and he predestined us so that we could be conformed to the image of his son, the image of his son. And so being saved is far more than just a ticket to heaven. Being saved is walking this journey of being transformed, of being changed, of being restored so that we are able to grow in our understanding of God's purpose on our lives. The third word in our, in, our, in our vision is release. And in verse 20, it says, teaching them to obey, or we could put in the word fulfill. I believe God is calling us to be full fillers, not pew fillers. Do I get an amen to that? God is calling us to be full fillers, not pew fillers. And what we do on a Sunday, I absolutely love it. I love it when we come together here or a hollow or whenever I'm in a group of people and we worship God and we hear God's word together and we rub shoulders and we have fellowship one with the other. And it's absolutely wonderful. I'll, sit, I'll swing with the, you know, from the chandeliers with the best of them. But all of that is to equip us and to prepare us so that we can be released into the fullness of what God has for each and every one of us. And I believe that knowing why we exist is the most fundamental motivation for our life. It inspires us, it empowers us, it energizes us when we know that above everything else, no matter how well you're doing your job or your career or your family or your education or whatever that may be, what transcends all of that is am I being faithful to fulfilling the purpose of God? that he has called me to. It's, it's, it is as grand as that this morning. And I know we can get lost in the, in the, the mundaneness of life and the routineness of life. And, and I know all of those things are important and we've got to build career and we've got to build family and we've got to do all of that. It's all part of it. But at the end of the day, when all of that's gone and all of that is stripped away, we're here for one purpose and that is to be released to fulfill the purposes of God in our lives. So I finish my little bit here with this question. What on earth are we doing here for heaven's sake? What on earth are we doing here? 
for heaven's sake? How much of what you do in your life is for heaven's sake and how much of it is for your sake? How central to your life and your priorities and your value systems, how central to that is actually the call of God upon your life? And please don't look at the guys that lead worship or the guys that lead churches or all of that and say, oh, well, they're the ones with a call upon their life. I've got news for you. We are all in full-time ministry. We are all in, and I'm not just using that as a nice little cute thing to say. We are all in full-time ministry. The only thing that changes is context. Your context is different to my context. But we are all called to go. We are all called to reach. We are all called to walk that pathway of becoming more like Jesus. And we are all called to be released into the world with the grace and the love and the joy and the hope that we have in Jesus. Amen. I'll finish with this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. When were they prepared? Was it an afterthought? Oh, well, these guys have made a decision to become a Christian, so I better find something for them to do. These things were planned beforehand in advance that we might walk in them and fulfill them in our lives. So listen, these next couple of weeks, today and next week, these are just snapshots. But over the next few weeks and months, we're going to be building layer upon layer Everything we do, everything we preach, everything that we're about, all of our ministries, all of our activities are going to feed into, are we reaching people? Are we being restored into the image of Christ? And are we being released to fulfill the destiny that God has for each and every one of you? I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, you have a God-ordained destiny for your life. Come on, preach it to them. And I don't care whether you've been a Christian for five minutes Or for 50 years. Come on, preach it. Come on, really preach it to them this morning. Because if there's one thing we are passionate about, passionate about here at the bridge, it is that God has a call for each and every one of us. And as I say, it may be different. You may be 18, you may be 88 this uh, this morning. You, you may be brilliant at loads of things. You might look at yourself and think, I don't have much to offer. Do you know what? It's irrelevant. God has a call for your life. And all he calls us to do is to be faithful to it. And that is our prayer and that is our cry. So I'm going to give you a moment. I want you to go. I want you to high five somebody. I want you to say hi to somebody. We're going to get the chairs out the front. I'm going to invite some people to come out. We're going to have a little conversation uh, this morning. But while we do that, why don't you go and say hi to somebody Go and say hi to somebody you've never met, somebody that's new to the church this morning. Uh, this morning, But I wanted to spend a little bit of time um, just chatting with these guys. Um, uh, they, these are all kind of leaders within the church. Uh, Simon heads up discipleship and our life links. Uh, they'll talk a little bit more in a moment. Ali is our youth pastor who will be starting full time in two weeks time. Woo! Awesome. Uh, Dawn is our evergreen kids pastor, uh, still with all the energy. Uh, Eddie is our, he hates the term, our missions champion for AOG. And um, Nigel's on the end there. No, that night. Nigel oversees Harlow, this incredible group of people from Essex. We're so glad you guys are with us this morning. And uh, so what I thought we would do, I just in the light of what I've just talked about, reach, restore, release, I just want to talk with these little guys a little bit about how they see that out working within their context of leadership and, and, and ministry uh, within the church. So hopefully we're going to get a little bit of conversation going. Um, and then there's a, there's a couple of videos that we're going to show uh, as well. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go, I'll go straight to Dawn because uh, Dawn's been around the longest. So, you know, we'll, we'll honour the elder. And uh, so Dawn's going to share it. I'm going to ask Dawn a couple of things just to talk a little bit about kids. But before we do, here's a little bit of a flavour of Activate and our kids ministry here in the church. Done. 
Hi everyone, my name is Dawn Say. I'm the Children's and Families Pastor here at the Bridge Church and I head up Activate with our children's ministry. You've seen some of the things that have gone on in Activate uh, that we do week in, week out, but let me now introduce you to some of our amazing team. I serve in Activate. And I serve in Activate. I serve in Activate. I serve in Activate. I serve in Activate. I am Tola and I serve in Activate. I serve in Activate. Hi, I serve in Activate. I serve in Activate. Me too. Great, wasn't it? Excellent. One of Dawn's new skills has been uh, video editing, so she's done a great, great job. So Dawn, tell us why kids. Just tell us why kids. Why kids? Well, um, I think... Th- the one that the, the vision of Activate is to grow um, s- children who are strong and know who they are in God. And I think the the thing we all have in common here is we've all been children, yeah. And some still are. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I am as well. But the thing is, if it, it, with the world, especially as it is now, and where the world is going, if we don't have the chance to influence these children, someone else will. And so it's really vital as a church, and we do, I, I'm, I'm into lots of other churches with kids work, I tell you, we do well here. We've got an awesome, t- I've got an awesome team who serve week in, week out, um, in, and because they've caught the vision of how important it is to influence children and families. And you know what, if we grow strong kids who know who they are in God, then we grow strong youth. Then we grow strong young adults, we grow strong adults, and we have a church who know who they are in God. You know, I, it, when, I was, when I was young, a young, a long time ago, I used to go to what they called Sunday school, and a lot of people would say that. And I, we, we intentionally don't call our children's ministry school because a lot of children don't have a positive um, outlook on, on school or don't like school. So we call Activate is our children's ministry. And we used to sing this song when I was at Sunday school. And it said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. And I think there is an element of we're strong in God. But I always grew up thinking I'm a weak person. So I, I, I'm a little flower that can't be around. And we, we want to turn that around here at the Bridge Church. We want to grow children who know yes. their identity yes. in Christ. They, they are baptised in the Spirit. They speak in tongues. They, they challenge their peer groups. They, they're leaders in their peer groups, they're not followers. And that is what we want to grow. It, but it takes a village to raise these children. And it's not just that, down to um, the people who are here on the Sunday, it's down to all of us to raise these, these children and families. And that then affects, sorry, I'm going, it was Frantic. So Frantic is a community children's club, um, which runs on a Friday. And, you know, we have the awesome opportunity every week to speak into non-church kids' lives, to ch- tell them the gospel. We, we always, always tell them the gospel every week. We tell, we're building them up. We're telling them who they can be in God, that they can know God. He can make a difference in their life. And then that affects their families. So that's why kids. <laughs> no, that's yeah. We'll come back in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So actually you mentioned you, so let's go from the one that's served the longest to the one that's been near the, the least. Ali, what, what, why you? What, what's the challenges that you're facing with Young people, what are we trying to build in our young people? So, me, young people, we've all been a young person whilst as we have been a child as well. And essentially, we are the kind of middle ground. So, we are getting the influx from kids. So, what happens then is so vital. And then, we kind of the middle ground. But I actually think, and young people, as young people, that is the time where they shake the most. That is where the boys in your country, uh, little people in society, and we had loads of loads of mentors on social media right now, but they're not necessarily yeah, free. That's right. The thing that the thing that are trying to shape our young people is living certain lifestyles or doing certain things and all so big right now. So I think youth challenges um is that we're in a we're we're in a society where for a lot of us, I mean social media would kind of only really just come out but for me, you know youth life just um, but it only just come out so it wasn't it wasn't that the whereas for now this is you know the first thing young people put on their phone the last thing they do 
of a night time is that also for me best safe. One of our big challenges. Um, but I think for us, we are trying to, our name is Excel, so we are trying to ensure that our young people live this extra large life. Uh, and that is living in community with other young people. And um, we're trying to create Friday nights like a home environment so that younger people, no matter who they are, where they come from, what they've done, they feel just as equally accepted as the next young person. And I think in doing that, in creating that sense of community, we can then speak into identity. We can then speak into these challenges that are happening and also just have conversations that we're not having. Sometimes conversations, particularly with that age group, people don't want to engage with conversations because it's quite hard. Whereas we're, we're not, we're trying to create um, Friday nights where we're talking about the unspoke about because that essentially is what's going to influence. And I think by doing that, by um, focusing on discipleship, by trying to plant seeds, we may never see the fruit of, of what's going to happen. But there's a lot of young people yeah. that over the years I've poured into them, and then you find out years down the line they've gone in churches or that and it might be that in youth they wasn't you know that engaged or they wasn't looking like over that enjoying themselves but actually the seeds that were sown were so vital for their development with God and and just yeah just encouraging them in everything we do we want to we want to make sure uh, that our young people feel that they're loved they're accepted they're welcome and they get to live out their board given. Fantastic, yeah. But of course, often people say, yeah, come on. Listen, guys, please, please engage with us in this and, 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 and let's all be part of this conversation together. So when these guys say things that you agree with, then let's, let's really support. Because a lot of people say the youth is the church of tomorrow, but we all aware, aren't we? The, the, the youth is not the church of tomorrow, it's the church of today. They're the ones now that are being formed to become those that are going to shape the world around them. Do you want to say something? Go on, quick. By the way, this is Zoe. Zoe, this is Zoe from... Hi, Zoe. Oh, the little black face of you. At what age do you start from and until how start what? Yeah, that's a really good question. So it is ages 11 to 18. So we've got... From secondary school. So it's like when they enter secondary school. Yeah, so year seven. So Dawn will go up to 11, year six, and we will go up to 11, year seven, because there's that crossover. Um... So we, yeah, we, we're looking at that. We are also looking at eventually uh, sorting a young adults uh, group out purely because when you get to that age, we don't then want you to kind of fall off. Um, so that's what we're looking at too. Soon come. So in the light of what we were saying earlier, th these are obviously two very, very key, very important parts of the church. But again, it all leads to this thing of being released into mission. So I'm going to go to Ed. Ed, can you just talk to us a little bit what do we mean by mission? It's more than just evangelism, isn't it? Um, one of the great themes of the Bible is God's purpose through all generations. We can see that in the call of Abraham. We can see it in God's purpose through the nation of Israel. We can see it extended into Jesus taking the role of God's servant. And then we see it coming onto the church and in the unfinished business of the church, um, that we need to see that the church has been called to uh, to fulfil a purpose. And it, it's not just something that was sprung on the church, but it's God's purpose throughout the generations. And God wants his glory to be manifest across the whole earth and to be known and recognized by every people group, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every language, every community. So mission is the fulfillment yeah. of that call. And, and the church is, is God's means of doing that before Jesus comes again. So there is unfinished business that we as the church, the British church, specifically here, but the church across the world is fulfilling this mission and this call. So that's that's what mission means to me. Um, yeah, and, and you would say we, we're all missionaries, aren't we? That's the thing. We've got to re we've got to rethink the way that we see the word missionary, don't we? In in a sense, we're all missionaries into our world. There's a sense that we're all missionaries, but there's also a sense where God has given a structure to the way that He does this, 
and that God is calling people to specific roles um, and specific offices within the church. And without going into too much detail, one of my great passions is Acts 13 and the church at Antioch, where the church was ministering to the Lord and the Holy Spirit said, separate out for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've appointed them. So after they prayed and fasted and made hands on them, they sent them out in response to that. And it's my passion to see in a local church context that kind of um, calling being worked out. That's where it comes. So if I've got a role as a mission champion, that, that's what I want to see from this church. There's a lot more to it than that, but I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Oh, that's great. Um yeah, come on. And, and we, we talked about context earlier, each of us fulfilling our purpose within context individually, but also corporately. So we'll go to, uh, to Nige, because obviously what we want is these values, this vision to be uh, expressed and worked out across all expressions of Bridge Church, whether it's kids, whether it's youth, uh, uh, whether it's life links, or all, all the various ministries of the church. And then, of course, at Harlow, and we, we're seeing... God really do some amazing things in Harlow, aren't we? So I'm going to ask you to share about that in just a second. But we've got a little video as well. So sorry. Yeah, thanks, Esther. It's going to turn the lights off this time so you can see it a bit more clearly. So yeah, we're going to play the, the, the video, give you a little bit of a flavour of what's going on at Harlow. Go for it. All my words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do but every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much Nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much. So good stuff. Really good stuff, huh? Um, so, Nigel, why don't you just, just give us a little bit of a, a, a flavour of what's going on up there? What are the key things that you're, that you're doing in terms of reach, restore, and release? Great stuff. Uh, I got handed this, I got handed this uh, microphone and it's got mustard in it. Yeah, Mr. Mustard. Maybe the Lord is saying something. Those of you who were part of Bristol Church <laughs> through COVID, do we all remember, don't we, Mr. Mustard? Turned up in his mustard shirt every week. Oh yeah, we got to got to revise those stuff. But I, th I think, for me, with with Harlow, we kind of represent uh, what rich, uh, restore and release actually means outside this church confine. Because uh, you, you cannot reach any place without a hunger. You can't reach any place without a passion for the place. And we could just go there and do a program. 
which we were doing initially. We're going in there, preach on a Sunday, then we come back again, we leave them to be. But if you really want to ch change something, I always use this example. You know, if you're cooking, if you cook, I don't cook as hard, but if you do cook and you add salt to your he meal, eat, I do eat, eat yeah. <laughs> if you add salt to it, if the salt is just at the surface, it doesn't change the flavor of the food. But when you stir it in, it actually begins to change the flavor. Like you don't see the salt anymore, but you see the effect of the salt. So when we started going on a Sunday, we go, we pray to come back. It was there. We were helping. We were putting a band-aid on stuff. But the truth is we're not changing anything until when we decided that we're going to take charge of that place, of that church in, ha in, uh, in Harlow. And when we did that, we began to see changes. So we may have seen lots of interaction with food there, but what goes behind the scene is a church that's fun. It's a church that people are coming into. It's a church that people are getting saved at. You know, and it's great to be, you see, something we need to recapture, even in us in Whitford, is that people still need to come to Christ. You know, yes, it's great for people to come from other churches, but when you see somebody get changed from the inside out and the transformation power of God, see it happening. I mean, a great example is uh, Nigel, I've got another uh, Nigel, Nigel and Zoe, Ruth and Tony over there gave their life to Jesus a few weeks ago. You know, I'm off. You know, so and I begin to see the changes. In fact, she told me today, is that, oh, I'm bringing somebody else to church. Praise God. You know, and I just, be, be, so we're building something where God is glorified, number one. He's going to take all the glory. Because when we start, we say, how are we going to really do this? You know, but God has always got a plan. God has always got a challenge. You say, if you trust me, it will happen. And I'm not a, what you call a full-time ministry in terms of, I go to church, I work from church, I am an IT professional, you know, but I've come to understand that when you have a passion inside of you, God finds, oh, yeah. gives you the grace to be able to do what you need to do, you know, for the kingdom of God. So I'm, a challenge, just a quick challenge for people who are here, who are professionals, think, okay, I'll just do the, um, just do the work uh, and give money to the church. No, if you've got a, a passion inside of you, and there is a gift inside of you. The grace of God is more than enough to release you into what you... I'm enjoying my, my work as an IT professional and leading this church in, uh, in Harlem. And I don't feel stressed. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But His grace is more than... So I just want to challenge you with that. Can I share one last testimony very quickly? You know, And there was, for me, the first people that gave their heart to Christ in Harlem were Ron and Lynn. And Ron went over, gave his life to Christ, and then he died last, uh, last month, last uh, in July last year, you know. And he want, one thing he wanted to do was one thing he wanted to get baptized, you know. He just said, "When is when he first get? I need to get baptized." Say, "Hold on, say, let's give our life to Christ first, then get baptized," you know. And we couldn't get him baptized, but we know he's with the Lord. But one thing that challenged me with him, uh, or I felt sad when he died because. We couldn't fulfill that. And I was thinking, mm, what's going to happen now with Lynn and everything? But I tell you what, God has just got such a great plan for people in Harlow. Because what's happened is that Lynn started come to church, me from more passionate now than before. And Lynn brought the granddaughter to church. We now comes to church on a regular basis. You see, God she told me, to yeah, God challenged me with something there. He said, when you minister to somebody to become a Christian, you're not just changing one life. You're changing the destiny of a family. The, I mean, that is totally blow my mind. So when I minister to one person, they, let me put it this way. You've got a family that don't know anything about God, never been taught about God, not in school, anywhere else, and won't give their life to Jesus. And then everything changes. You know, now we've got a granddaughter coming to church on a regular basis. We don't know how far that is going. So for me, that challenge me so much that it's not just changing one person. It's changing a generation in Jesus' name. That's really Amen. Good. That's really good. And before we move on, just I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that have been so faithful uh, at Harlow, but there's, there's three of them here particularly. So I'm going to ask Amanda and Pat and uh, Laurel just to, just to stand up, guys. These guys have been really <laughs> serving 
so well. And, you know, Pat, heroes. Pat is our hero. Pat has been there at the church now for 225 years. As she served faithfully. And she looks good on it, doesn't she? But Pat has been the, the, the one that's held it all together through the difficult times when we were first involved. And Laurel's been there, an absolute stalwart foundation of the church. And then Amanda's just doing some great stuff uh, with the community. So why don't we appreciate these guys? And of course, the thing that, thank you guys, the thing that leaks all of this together is this part for us to develop and become more like Jesus. And so I just want to just ask Simon, just share a little bit from your perspective of where, where your passion is in terms of each and every one of us walking in that continuum growing, developing, becoming more like Jesus. And that drives us to mission. It drives us to worship. It drives us to all these things. The motivation is to be like Jesus. Just share a little bit about what you do. No, I thank everybody for what they've shared because the, the significance in, in, in discipleship is the outworking of so much that goes and is underpinned through various different ministries that happen within the house. But I had this this impact my own life when I was 21 years old as a as a someone who thought I was a Christian, someone who thought I had it together and was massively challenged on the road when I was at a, a, a Christian hostel uh, with a couple of university friends in Amsterdam. And in that space, I was massively challenged about the difference between what is good, what is a, being a believer, what's the difference between us, what separates us from from the world and I struggled in that particular place but found incredible solace and growth and transformation when I went back to my home church and started building relationship with people who were further down the road on me uh, who had uh, who had experience had uh, gifting had grace on their life to speak into areas where I had a lot of questions uh, about my faith and so I, my, my passion and my absolute belief is that in this, play, in this place of discipleship, in this space of walking together intentionally, is that we have an opportunity to speak and, and live Christ uh, into uh, and through one, one another's lives like we, we could never believe. Well, what it takes is, a, 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 is, is that hunger, is that desire, is that humility to first and foremost recognize that we don't have it all together. And the premise of when we're in that place is that we are humble of hearts to receive the very things that Christ place, places on us. And you used the, the scripture very aptly this morning, Romans 8. I want to be transformed. It's the likeness of Christ. I, uh, the, the very thing that people need to see in this world as we step outside of these four walls is the light and the love and the salt of Jesus that comes in and through of us. And it's very good and very well that I can come here on a Sunday morning and I can accept the message, but the importance of me then moving forward from that, and it says in Romans 10, is that Liberians, we take it, we chew over it, and we ask further questions of it so that it becomes our very nature. It becomes everything of who we are about. So it's not just accepting the word, it's about fulfilling it outside of the four walls. It's about walking it together with other people and allowing ourselves to accept that the Christ is on each and every one of us in this room. And so just like Eddie and, 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 uh, and the guys here have said, you know, I want to glean from what it is that, that, that Christ is speaking and ministering to you in your personal time, that when we come together in discipleship and walking together, that we grow as one. That's fantastic. I hope you're appreciating. There's real passion up here, isn't there? And, and we've got a whole bunch of other leaders. You've got Andy, Josh, Ush. There's, there's a whole bunch of other people in the church. We could have had 12, 15, 20 people up here and they'd all be saying, we're passionate about getting out there and, and letting people know that God loves them, Jesus loves them, and he's got a plan for their lives. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to indulge with us just for another five minutes or so. I want to go through each of them just very, very briefly and, and just ask, okay, guys, um, so what is, what is the greatest challenges so maybe for you, Dawn, what's the greatest challenges? What is the greatest uh, threats to our young people, to our kids in society? And, and, and what kind of things can we do to support that and to help that? Okay, so um, I think there's two, two main things. Um, I think uh, busyness in families is a, a key. Families are maxed out with all the stuff that their kids do these days and the ch parents feel obliged to cram so much into their children's lives. When, and actually, when really God... Should, Really, we want to encourage them to put God first and then everything else 
layer after that. So I think that it's a, 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 a pandemic of families where children are, are just stressed out, maxed out, and um, trying to cram in God as just a part of that, whereas it, it should be flipped for, for that. And I think for me, the other thing that we, re- I think Ali will probably say this as well, uh, we do struggle for um, team. Um, we are at a point in Frantic where really we could possibly say we can't open on a, some Fridays. Um, we desperately need men. That Some of these kids coming in need a, a, a male figure. Um, Andy does an amazing job. He comes in once a uh, half term. But we do need men. Um, and in Activate, we are, again, probably, we, we need six adults out there minimum a week. Um, and I think we're in crash at a point again where probably after Easter we might not be able to run a full crash every week and probably one of the activate groups as well. And I think the issue, I think people here think, think well, I'm not a kids worker, um, so I, I don't qualify. And I wrote down quickly what a few of the people in activate who serve activate do. We've got an international DJ, we've got an accountant, we've got a doctor, we've got a civil servant, we've got teachers, two teachers, that's all learning mentor, sleep practitioner, business analyst, client ma- engagement manager, people from all walks of life. Yes, and when Jesus called his disciples, they were from all different walks of life. And we need people from all different walks of life. You don't have to be a seasoned kids worker to serve in Acta or in Excel. Uh, you just need to have a passion and a heart um, for for children and young people. So I, I think they're the we we I think we we struggle for team. But I think on top of that, we struggle. I think the the struggle is with families of, you know, having so much going on in kids' lives that God is crammed out. Yeah. And by the way, if you're wondering, I, I'm not the international DJ that they were referring to. If you want to know who that is, have a chat with Dawn. Um, it's not me. Not <laughs> yeah, I've seen Dawn try the discs yeah. in the office. It's not working. Um, uh, so Ali, what about you, you, yourself? You know, I mean, they're, they're kind of similar, but it, it picks up a level, doesn't it, with what the young people are facing and how we can help them to navigate through that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So like I was saying, social media plays a massive part. I think similar to Dawn, I think church kind of, churches sometimes can be a bit of an afterthought. So there's so much other things to do before church. So football and Uh, extracurricular stuff and we're not saying for one minute that like that's not important too but I think when it always takes priority over church then we get to the age of 18 19 and we're like my child is not in you know there's stuff that's going on but but actually that the stuff that would have been sown the the conversations that be had the 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 resilience and, and the leaning on God in them situations where it gets hard at university, we've now not got a chance to speak into. So I think um, busyness is definitely one. Uh, social media is the other. And I think it's just, um, for me, the, the biggest way that we can combat that, obviously um, gaining more volunteers would be great. But I think prayer, you know, prayer is like one of the things that we we often sometimes do as an afterthought. And actually... We need to be we need to be building these young people up in prayer. So if you can't make it, if you can't volunteer, then please pray for us. We run on a Friday from um, 7.30 till half nine. Please, during that time, just be praying that the kids that are there, that God wants to speak to, um, that, that they'll have that transformation that goes on uh, inside. And then they can impart that into their friends too. I think... Um, Prayer is 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 Absolutely. one of the most yeah. important things that that we can do. So I think, yeah, the busyness, um, but just just pray for us, pray for us. That would be great. So Ed, what about when it comes to like we've we've said we're all called to mission, we're all called to serve, we're all called to fulfil purpose. What do you think are the key things that work against that in our lives? Okay, I'm actually going to ask to a um, a different question, Chris, because you gave us a list of prepared questions and. <laughs> I've got to uh, them through them, yeah. No. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pick up on the the second question on your list, which was where does your your passion for mission come from? And I've got to say that um, it's a mixture of natural and spiritual DNA. Um, I can relate a load of formative experiences that, looking back, I can see God's hand in them. And if you look at them, they were fairly secular you might say but 
it was part of God's work um, in preparation. It's things like collecting stamps as a kid, make, giving me an interest in, in the different countries of the world or different things about their history and everything. Um, my mum was passionate about mission. She taught me how to sing Dawn's Sunday school song in Japanese. Um, and we won't ask you to do it, Ed. No, no. <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> um, in in the trying my age a bit here. In the 1970s, I travelled a few times behind the Iron Curtain. I got to hear first-hand accounts of how um, the Soviets had, had invaded into what was then Czechoslovakia, and that was my first sort of understanding of the suffering church, the church that is persecuted. And so that developed a passion that is is still strong. And for those of you that, that know me, that is something that is, is one of my sort of main prayer interests. What I want to say from that is think about the things that God has prepared you for, yeah. the formative experiences in your life. They can be things even before you came to Christ. As, as Chris was talking about these things that were predestined, yes. these things that were known, God knew yeah. each one of us here before we were even born, before we were formed. And he had a call on our lives. And aspects of that call were taking place even before you responded to Christ. And since you've come to Christ, then that should start to fall into place and you'll start to receive things. Now, what I want to throw out, and it might seem as a challenge, but what has God said to you? Has God given prophetic words, revelation into your life? Have, have you asked God to speak in, into your situation and, and to, to say, where are you leading me, Father? You know, what is my calling? And I'm not saying I'm, I'm trying to sign you up for mission to Papua New Guinea, but I believe that each one of us here has got a spiritual calling and... God isn't slow to reveal that to you. And God can also confirm that word to other people. You'll find that um, God will give you first, but then God will often place people around you that will confirm that word to you. So that's what I want to sort of throw out from this. Where is your passion? And it might be a secular thing. It might be the work that you're doing professionally. But God is, is going to use that and enlarge that process in you and God will often draw people of, of like calling alongside you and, and place them around you and this is one of the reasons we have church we have fellowship here we have family so that we can help each other to grow that there, there is a it's quite a famous thing about um if you see a a, a grate full of burning coals you take one of those coals away and it loses its heat but when they're together, they heat one another and the heat is generated. So this is where we are as a church. It's it's about equipping one another. It's not from us guys sitting here at the front necessarily. I'm happy to confirm. I'm happy to pray with you. I'm happy to speak into your life as necessary. But primarily, it's you hearing from God and, and hearing from those that God has placed around you, and that ties in with your discipleship. And I think that's I think that's crucial. The whole thing of understanding that mixture of what God has invested into us, and then and then kind of giving it a, a, a spiritual capacity and a spiritual direction is absolutely spot. So that's great. Um, so I, I am aware of, of, of time. Um, I did we did give half an hour for this, and we're kind of running a little over. But please just bear with us a couple more minutes. I'm going to ask you to be really brief, Nigel, and then I just want to have a, a, a couple of moments with um, with Simon, and then and then we're going to just draw the whole thing to a close. But yeah, just in terms of what we've been talking about, uh, in, in terms of mission, in terms of challenges and what have you, uh, and the great things that we're seeing happening in Harlow, just tell us a little bit about where where you where you're looking to go with that, and how you're looking to meet some of those challenges in Harlow. I'll start with the fact that uh, going to Harlow is more like a God, how is this going to change? Can anything good come out of Harlow? But when you tell God that, God says, yep, 
yeah. you are it. You know, you're at the beginning. You're go going to start, and, and I'm going to give you a group of people like these guys to come alongside and help you build something. And then you begin to believe and trust God and say, God, and begin to say what you want to see in Harlow. As again, talking about the problems in Harlow. And we find as we begin to do that, find the time to talk to people, not just share. You see, one thing that happens now that's great is the fact that our church service or our fellowship is not just a Sunday afternoon. It's a Tuesday. It's a Thursday. It's a cafe, you know, that happens on a Saturday. You know, and all of this, in fact, more people come to know Jesus from cafes yeah. and the Jesus oh, than on Sundays. Yeah. You know, and it shows you that with God, nothing is impossible. And I want to give a big shout out to people like Len. I put, you probably saw Len in the photo. They're just taking a photo with somebody. The challenge we have is that we don't have, and I'll, I'll tell this to Chris, we don't have enough believers that will come and befriend and talk to the other people that are in there. So I will say, our challenge, if you've got time, on a Sunday or maybe even during the world, come come over. We will let I mean you don't have to preach. You just have to be there for people, talk to people, you know, and just make sure that people know that look, they are loved and they're welcome. And that is the main challenge, you know, that we have. I would have loved to bring uh, Amanda to come, but we're running out of time about what we do in the community, the recognition that the Harlow Council is giving us and we're going, what did we really do? But all glory yes. and praise to God. And I would just stop it there. Also, thank you, the Hards. So then weaving through all of this is this, this, this discipleship thing, which really is what drives us to the mission, to kids, to youth, to wherever God has called us to. Um, and one of the things also that, that as part of that, that uh, Simon oversees is, is our life things. We do believe very much that it's such a crucial, central part of our community, our church, to be plugged into smaller groups, as well as doing the big thing on the Sunday and all of those meetings, it's important to do that. And why don't you just share a couple of little things that you've been experiencing in, 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 with the life links, and maybe just a little about where we want to go in terms of breaking it down even further, just for a couple of minutes. Yeah, please. sure. So, I mean, I, I really want to start by honouring um, our life link leaders, um, John and Catherine, Eddie, Elsa, Tola, Nigel, um, Ola, Yeni, uh, Emma, who's supported me every step of the way. Who am I forgetting? Vic Chris O'Grady Vic as well, Vic and Rube who can't be here today, um, many of them have served diligently uh, for some over the, over a decade uh, in the process. And so, please, can we just start by uh, yeah, recognising them? Thank you, John. Um, we, um, I've, I've, I've been able to spend some time with each of them over the last few weeks, uh, just off the back of um, talking with the SLT, uh, specifically about the direction for discipleship. Uh, in the long term, so so for so many years we've 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 had this model of the twelve, um, and that has been that has been so helpful in terms of generating and 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 bringing new people from from the community into those spaces. Uh, we have very different uh, dynamics that come out of each of the life links in terms of the uh, the giftings, uh, the teaching, the focus, and the attention. Um, but one thing I was saying to the SLT is that I feel that there is uh, there's time for change. Um, there's time for a shift for all of us to work uh, hand in hand uh, when it comes to our personal development, uh, as well as our ability to walk with one another with intentionality. And so I'm just I'm very excited in terms of being able to uh, walk with uh, these guys. And it's a continuing process. Um, but we will be looking to uh, feed into the church opportunities for discipleship streams that take care of the, the very thing, the various things that we've, we've spoken about today, but also things that we recognize that you as a, as a church go through on your day-to-day -day basis. So what would it look like to have not just a stream which is for Alpha, uh, not just a stream for Bible 101, which has been a phenomenal addition to our, our church family, but there are key areas that even when we come out of Alpha where people are still trying to figure out what does it mean to pray? Like how do I how do I open my Bible? Where, where should I start? Uh, what about marriages? What about um, parenting? What about bereavement? It's not discussed enough about in our church, and yet there are so many things within the Bible that speak to the significance of how we are to be. So there's a, a wide variety of different streams that we can go down. It's something that we will um, we will refine, but we want to do well as part of that. And the second part of of that is our uh, is 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 threes and focusing on 
a uh, model which Jesus used so prevalent with the apostles John, James and Peter. And we're just, um, we've recognized that within my own life link, uh, we have over 20 uh, people. And I know that there are 10 people that are organically doing this outside that meet on a regular basis to come together to pray, to hold each other accountable, um, to go deeper into the word uh, where there might be confusion, where there might be um, uncertainty. And also just helping to, to encourage and lead one another on, as the word says is so crucial. So we're going to be perfecting that um, over this this coming year. We want to encourage everybody within the body to participate in that. Um, and uh, we'll be handing out more information as that goes. But I really feel that the, the shift will not only help um, uh, our lifelong leaders to have a little bit of a break as well from having to, uh, you know, facilitate time in, time out. And, and this is what has been spoken from the front here. We want to energize you guys as well and the gift that is on you that when we run these particular streams you may become a leader of that stream out of the other side or may find a a a passion that is uh that is on your heart that is so embedded within scripture to pour out into the body that we can also receive and be part of that is awesome that's awesome come on that that's great guys i want to appreciate you why don't we all stand together and we're going to appreciate these guys for what they do and hey over the so as I said, you know, um, there's lots to think about from what Chris said and how that impacts us as a church. Um, if you're a visitor, um, you know, there's still a lot you can think about, about refreshing where you are, where your walk with God is going and how that affects your daily life um, and the people you interact with every day as well. Um, so I just want to remind you as now before we finish that um, we have Life Links. Please do remember Life Links is, you know, so important in the life of our church. Um, if you're not in a life link, please do let us know. If you want to join one, we will put you in touch with Simon, who can allocate you to a local life link on a night that suits you. And it really is important to stay connected. That is how we stay connected really well in church here. Uh, also remember uh, Bridge Church Harlow, which is on a Sunday straight after Woodford. Um, that is at two o'clock if you want some nibbles and some refreshments. And then the service starts at 2.30. It's a short service. Um, and the people there are doing an amazing job. Do try and get over there also on Sunday. Okay, so that's it. Um, you know, I hope you have an amazing week. Uh, I hope you have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you in person if you can on Sunday, but if not, on this broadcast next week. See you.